Hello and welcome to From the Roots Up. Today we are going to be deep frying turkey. That's right, whether you are getting ready for a Thanksgiving feast or you just want some turkey to have. Um, we like one of Christy's favorite things is turkey. So we cook one of these, slice it up, and she'll have sandwiches for, uh, for a while. So no matter what the reason, if you are thinking about deep frying a turkey, this is where you want to be. I'm going to show you at least everything I know, uh, some reasons to do it, maybe some reasons not to do it. So if you're curious, stay tuned. We're going to walk through the process. All right. First thing out of the chute, let's talk about a couple of reasons why you might want to deep fry your turkey. Um, number one, cooking turkey in a deep fryer is extremely fast. And so if you have a lot of things to get done and, you know, a big gathering, a lot of people, a lot of food, uh, or just, you know, small kitchen appliances and everything is going into the oven and you're going to have to wait for the turkey to get its turn and it's going to take so long having a deep fryer sitting outside while everything else is going on inside gives you more cooking power uh, but also where this turkey might take a few hours in the oven it's probably going to take 30 or 40 minutes in the deep fryer and so that might be a good reason to help you get through a hectic day of preparing food the deep fryer might be an option. Another reason you might want to use the deep fryer is just because the way it tastes, because it's going to give you a nice crispy outside and usually if done right, it's going to keep it moist on the inside. If you're like me, the worst thing about turkey is getting one that was cooked too long and a little too dry on the inside and there's just not enough gravy to, uh, to make that moist and help it go down. Uh, frying is a good way to keep the moisture inside, partially because it's so much faster. It doesn't have time to just dry out and, and air out in the oven. And so there's a couple of pluses. There's some pretty big minuses. We'll go ahead and start by filling you in on some of the minuses. The first minus is you got to have a deep fryer. Um, if the only thing you're going to do is fry a turkey once a year, going and investing in a deep fryer, buying, well, I'll show the, what the unit looks like outside. It's not big, it's not heavy, it's not hard to store or move around, um, but it's something else that you gotta buy. Also, ones like this are run on propane. If you don't already have propane bottles for a, a gas grill or something in the backyard, then you also have to go buy propane. Now, we do have a gas grill. It's easy to, to swap these around and refill them as needed, but uh, there's some expense to getting started if you want to deep fry your turkey. The next expense that doesn't even have anything to do with the bird itself is you have to have enough oil to fry this large bird. Now, what we're going to be using today is canola oil. Typically, people use peanut oil for uh, running a deep fryer like this, um, as long as it's an oil that has a high smoking point. In other words, um, it's not just going to start burning off and smoking to be cooking at 325 to 375 where we're going to be cooking this bird today. Um, the reason I'm not using peanut oil today is because peanut oil is expensive. So I went and checked a gallon jug like this of peanut oil is about $15 where canola oil is only about 10. Now, vegetable oil is cheaper, but vegetable oil does not have the high smoking point of these others, and so it is not recommended. You want something that can handle the heat and not just be burning off as you're cooking because it's, it's starting to, to burn and evaporate, right? Um, so $10 for this, the problem is one gallon is not going to be enough. So we're actually gonna be using, for this size turkey, somewhere between three and four gallons of oil. Now, the plus side is oil can be reused. And say, I'll show you when we're done how to 
uh, go about straining and storing so that you get more than just one use out of oil. Who wants to spend $40 on oil plus the propane plus the cooker just to cook one turkey? But if you have one of these already and you're accustomed to using oil and you use it more often than once a year and you're reusing your oil, that's going to bring the cost way down. Here's a tip for you. If you want to try this for the first time and you don't want to invest in everything, you probably know somebody who has a deep fryer. Either um, they got it for turkeys like this, they got it for doing fish fries in the summer, um, or there's other uses for a large deep fry uh, setup like this. They probably don't use theirs every day, so ask around. Maybe a friend has one sitting in the garage they'll let you borrow. Uh, top off the propane for them when you're done as a thank you, and then all you'd need is the oil to get started. That'll at least keep you from an investing in the stove when you're not sure if this is even for you. Uh, so there's a, there's a tip. Uh, some other tips I will mention as I remember them when we go through the video, but I wanna show you what we're going to use to get started. So first of all, this fryer is a turkey fryer. It comes with a large stock pot. This is just aluminum. It's very light. Um, because it's aluminum, it gets hot very fast. It doesn't hold that heat like a stainless steel uh, or cast iron or something would, but it is much easier to lift and carry, especially when uh, you're adding water, oil, uh, things to it. And so it's going to hold up and do its job just fine. It is large enough for the turkey to fit in. If you have a fish fryer rather than a turkey fryer, the only difference is the size of the pot. Usually fish frying pots are going to be more shallow. They're gonna come with a basket that sits down in it so that you can raise the fish out of it. Your turkey is not gonna sit in that pot. If you get a dedicated turkey fryer, it will come with a large enough pot, or if you have a big stock pot that will safely sit on your burner, you can just swap those pots out. I would try it before I fill it and light anything and uh, make sure the bottom of it is big enough to sit firmly on the supports uh, because you don't want a big thing of, of hot, bubbling lava oil um, tipping over, spilling. Uh, this is going to cause all sorts of problems you want to avoid. But if it sets sturdy on top of your burner, uh, then you're good to go. When you get a kit like this, the pot comes with a lid. You're going to need it uh, to be covered to keep the heat in, to keep the, the bubbling grease in. And the lid is going to have a little hole. That is for your thermometer. Now, this is not the thermometer that I'm going to stick into the meat. You could, um, but I'm not going to do that. This is the thermometer that is going to be telling me the temperature of the oil. Um, I have a digital thermometer. We will be stopping and checking the temperature of the bird um, along the way. And this is just going to be hanging in the oil, in the pot, not stabbed into the bird so that we know what our oil temperature is at all times. Uh, in addition to that, if it is a turkey fryer, not a fish fryer, you're gonna have this little contraption here. Um, this is going to be inserted into the bottom, the base of the bird. The top will come out of the neck hole and these spikes, almost looks like a, a boat anchor or something, are gonna catch and hold and support the turkey so that we can lower it down into the pot and of course this will stay in there so as the um, as the turkey is cooking this is going to get hot you're not going to be able to grab it so the other piece is this uh, tiny coat hanger that is going to be used to give you a grab handle so that we can lift our bird in and out of the pot now again i just mentioned if you have a fish fryer instead and you're just swapping out a stock pot you're going to need to find something like this um, so that you can raise and lower the turkey safely into your hot oil bath. Here in a minute when we step outside, I'll show you the burner, show you how to get it lit. Um, there are different kinds. Mine has an electronic safety system, uh, and so I have to, to treat it a little differently than just a straight burner. Um, but we'll show you how that works. We're about to get started, but first, we gotta go back in time and get this bird ready to go in the oil today to get into the Wayback Machine. All right, the very first thing that has to be done, and hopefully you're not watching this video too late, is most of the time when you buy your turkey, it's going to be frozen. 
and you're not going to want to cook it frozen. You especially cannot drop it into a vat of hot grease while it's frozen. Um, very dangerous. So we just got back from the store. Walmart has turkeys on sale for 98 cents a pound. We got a pretty good sized one. This is about 17, yeah, a little over 17 pounds and it is frozen solid. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. If you have room in the refrigerator, um, you can just take a pan to catch any moisture. Um, just because it's frozen, because it's thawing, there's going to be some runoff. Um, if you have room in the refrigerator, put it in just like this. Don't open it, don't take it out of the package. Uh, you want it thawing just like it is. There's a guide, probably no matter what brand of turkey that you buy, there's gonna be thawing instructions on the back. Um, if your turkey doesn't have it on the package, you can find it online, um, but it's gonna, this is gonna be roughly four to five days. So when we're thawing, the reason we want this in the refrigerator is so that it never is sitting in above 40 degree temperature. Setting out on the cabinet, it will thaw, and while the inside takes a lot longer to thaw, the outside is gonna warm up and give a chance for dangerous bacteria to start growing. And so uh, that's why we have to make sure we give it enough time. Now, if there's not room in the refrigerator, there are some options. You're just gonna have to pay a little closer attention to it. Um, some of you live in different areas where it's colder outside this time of year, and maybe your garage um, is going to be cold enough, you know, if you don't have a heated garage, uh, that you can just set it out there. Uh, if you don't live in an area that's cold enough, you could use an ice chest and, uh, and keep some ice in there, but you will have to keep checking on it and make sure it stays cool. That's not going to speed up the process, but that's gonna give you options so you don't take up your whole refrigerator. Okay, another option, if the garage is not cold enough, you don't have room in the refrigerator, and you don't have an ice chest handy, or you just need it to thaw faster, is we can put it in water. We can do this right in the kitchen sink. You'll lose your sink space for a little while, but it won't take four or five days like it does in the refrigerator. If you fill the sink with water um, and put this in, it's just a big ice cube. It's going to cool the water down. And uh, if you check it, especially if you have a thermometer, make sure it's not getting above 40 degrees or part of the turkey is not sticking out in the air. Um, we are starting early enough. We have enough room in our refrigerator that we're just going to put it in a pan and slide it in there for a few days. When it's all thawed, we'll come back and we'll talk about prepping it to cook. All right, just real fast before we go any further, I'm gonna stop and re-emphasize the importance of thawing the turkey all the way through. Yes, it takes several days. I mentioned some different ways to do that if you don't have refrigerator space. You gotta make sure it is thawed completely, but also you gotta make sure it doesn't get above 40 degrees so that it just doesn't turn into a, um, a bacteria jungle before you go to cook it. Um, it is important though, bad fire can happen. Uh, that's why you don't use these fires inside at all. Uh, not even inside a garage. It needs to be outside. If the weather is just not permitting, you should probably find a different way to cook your turkey. But the next thing I gotta do is back up just one day and show you how we prepared it with flavor so that we can cook it today. All right, here we are the day before we're gonna deep fry. Um, we've got a few things to do to get this turkey ready. It sat in the refrigerator for four, almost five, I'll call it four and a half days. Still in the package, I just now opened it up, um, took it out of the package, rinsed it off, but I haven't done anything else. Uh, we're gonna get this ready so that we can deep fry it tomorrow. And here are a couple of things that you need to know. Um, most of the time, maybe not always, the turkey is going to come with a little plastic thermometer in it. Uh, these are designed so that when the turkey reaches a safe internal temperature, the little red button pops out um, we're not gonna drop it in the deep fryer with the plastic button still in it. We don't need that. We will use a, um, a, a thermometer. I've got a digital thermometer I'll be using. Uh, there are some uh, wireless options that might work with a deep fryer. Um, I don't want to try my wireless um, Wi-Fi timer down in a 
vat of bubbling grease, uh, it might be fine. I just don't want to do that. Um, there's also just analog thermometers that you can, can poke in there to check. Uh, so we'll do that while it's cooking. We don't need the plastic one that came with it. Now, if you're new to turkeys, um, there's some stuff going on back here that you want to know no matter how you're cooking it, um, but especially for dropping it in the deep fryer. On the back end, we've got another piece of plastic that is kind of holding um, holding this thing together. And don't, you're not gonna, you gotta kind of reach in. It's hooked in there pretty good. Um, it holds these back legs together and just kind of keeps the, the, the bottom hole, the, the orifice of this turkey all closed up tight. We don't want to drop that in our um, boiling grease, our, our, our deep fryer vat. Uh, also inside of here, okay, between his back legs and this, this big open cavity, you're gonna find a few things. Now we've got a neck. Okay, the other thing that you wanna look for, and it's not in the back of this one. If it's not in the back, we're gonna spin this around and look in the front in the neck hole. There is a pouch, sometimes a couple. Um, I've, had, I've had more than one come out of a turkey before. There's only one in this one. This is what is referred to as the giblets. Giblets are just the edible insides of a turkey. There's the stomach and the intestines that you don't want to have anything to do with, but then there's some good uh, heart healthy meat. As a matter of fact, the liver, the gizzard, um, there's probably two or three things in there. Um, this will go great if you're making stock. Um, if you want to use it to make your gravy, we'll set these aside. Now, one of the downsides of using the deep fryer like we're doing is we're not gonna have that pan of drippings in the oven to use for the gravy. So uh, if you wanna set this aside and use this for some stock and then use that for your gravy, that'll be great. Christy will do um, probably lots of, of broth stock and, uh, and, and we will save these for her to add. Okay, once you do that, we're gonna prep this turkey for cooking. Now the reason I set this aside a day early is because I'm going to use a brine, an injectable brine, to, uh, to get some flavor and some moisture inside of this bird. Now, there are lots of things that you can do. Since we're deep frying, I'm choosing an injectable brine because we'll squirt some in there all over different places, and that'll help give it flavor and moisture on the inside. You can uh, just brine these, just soak these, and you'll want to, to check the uh, instructions for what you're doing, the method that you're doing, and see how early to start that. Um, also pay attention, when I purchased this turkey, um, it has been pre-brined. And so some salt and uh, some flavor, basically, basically turkey stock um, was used to pre brine it. Since the package says that, if you're going to brine again, pay attention. The recipe will probably tell you if it's been pre-brined to use less salt. Um, so you can check on the instructions for the turkey or check on the instructions for your brine and you'll find some tips there. Another thing that people often do to prepare a turkey will be to season it on the outside, especially if we were putting it on the smoker. Um, we would be seasoning it pretty heavy. The problem is with the deep fryer, once we plunge it down in the bubbling molten um, cooking oil, um, most if not all of what we season the outside with is just going to fall off. It's gonna wash off. It's not gonna do any good. So we're going to inject. Um, there are recipes, maybe you have your own, to make your own injectable brine and all you need is a syringe to do that. Um, we're gonna keep this one super simple and just use We Like Tony Sacheries. They make lots of good seasoning. Uh, this is a Creole style butter injectable marinade and it's a kit that comes with the syringe. So you don't need anything except a few dollars to pick this up and the instructions Sorry, I was crinkling that paper. The instructions are gonna be right on the bottle. They shake it up really good. They recommend 
Um, if you're not going to use the whole bottle all at once, you don't stick the syringe down in the bottle and then you're sticking it back in and adding um, bacteria back into the bottle that you're saving. And so we're going to take probably, I may use this pretty good sized turkey. I may use the whole bottle, but just in case, uh, we're going to get a little bowl, little cup, something that we can pour this into so that we can put it into our syringe. And if there's leftover in the bottle, it will still be clean and fresh. Give me one second to get this opened and grab a bowl. All right, we're back, we're ready to go. I'm using a measuring cup instead of a wide, shallow bowl because when we stick the syringe down in there, um, if it's a wide, shallow dish, then you could have a lot of marinade that's not very deep and you can't get the syringe under it without tipping it up. And So I like something that's narrower and taller. Uh, it's just easier to, to get the syringe underneath. We're gonna shake this up real good. And I'm gonna start by pouring about half of this bottle. There's the seal showing this is new and fresh. I'm gonna start with about half of this bottle into our measuring cup. Okay, the syringe in this kit, you have to pull it apart. Just pull the plunger all the way out. And inside is going to be the needle portion. We're gonna screw it onto the end. And then we just reassemble it. Now, um, it should be clean, but it's always a good practice to make sure everything is clean before you work with meat. So I'm actually going to wash this off first. And actually, I'm gonna move this into our um, tray. This, this will hold it in the refrigerator again tonight until we're ready to fry it tomorrow. Uh, the cutting board just was so I could get it out of the package and pull all the stuff out. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and inject it in our dish here. Okay, and what we're gonna do, especially on the breast, the, the, the white meat is going to usually be a little drier and a little less flavor because there's a little less fat in that area. Um, the dark meat, the legs, thighs back here, um, are, don't need the, uh, the injectable brine quite as much. So I'm gonna start with the breast. Um, that way, if for some reason, now this whole bottle is gonna be enough, but maybe you've got a partial bottle, maybe you mixed your own, you weren't sure how to mix. Um, I'm gonna start with the breast so that if I run out, the legs will be fine on their own. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to start sticking the needle in, just imagine a grid, just draw imaginary graph paper on this thing with about one inch squares and just poke in everywhere those lines would cross. We're gonna place the syringe down in and draw some out. I'm gonna start on this side and we're just gonna start sticking it in and squishing a little. Now, some of it, if you poke it all the way through to the center, you'll just be oozing your brine into the middle of the turkey. Um, if you don't go all the way to the center, then see if you can see this. As you put it in, it will start oozing out of these holes that you're making, and that's good. You want a little bit of ooze. And we're gonna refill and just keep going. As soon as I see it running out somewhere, I stop because then I know my brine is just running down the outside of the bird and it's not staying in, in the meat. Some of them, it doesn't take as much. And some of them takes a little more. So as you can see, mm, this is starting to look really good. It smells good too. We like, whoops, we like Tony Sachery's seasoning. Okay, I got one side done. I'm gonna start on the other side. Ok, 
Okay, that is both sides of the breast. Now I'm going to move to the legs and the thighs. Everything that I'm doing is on the bottom side of the bird. If we turn it over, uh, there's not really enough on the back to be able to inject it. I'll be able to get a little bit into these wings. And then the last part that I'm doing, I'll turn this around, is just right here on the sides. Um, not part of the leg itself, it's this piece here, and I go in kind of long ways. And I'll get those sides. Now this, I've got just a, a tiny bit of this left. Um, since this is not enough to do a whole nother turkey, and I'm probably not going to be um, injecting any quail, or um, game hens anytime soon. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna let this, cause it's gonna sit in the refrigerator tonight. Um, we're gonna pour some of this over it. And on the inside. And just I'm just gonna let it soak the rest of that up. Um, so that's it, that's all there is to it. We've got most of that inside the meat on this bird. Um, everything, I'm going to clean up the edges of this pan before I put it back in the refrigerator. I'm also going to wrap it in saran wrap um, instead of just having a, a rogue turkey setting there. But this is it. We're going to let it sit overnight tonight. Tomorrow afternoon after church, I'm going to get the fryer out, uh, get the temperature regulated on that, and we will walk through the process of deep frying our turkey. We'll see you back in just a minute. All right, now we're back. There has been um, overnight, not quite 24 hours, probably 16, 18 hours uh, for this turkey to absorb that moisture, absorb that flavor, getting ready to cook. We are almost ready to fill this thing with oil and start the fire. However, another really important step, it's not just putting a frozen turkey in your heated oil that can cause problems. It is also over filling this with oil and then adding your turkey in and causing the oil to run over the top. Hot oil, um, it's already preheated, it's gonna run down the side, it could catch fire, it could splatter, it could cause a, a big fireball, it could cause lots of problems. So we gotta make sure that we don't do that. Now this turkey fryer, the pot, came with a minimum and maximum fill line. They are, let me show you, I'll use this uh, to give you an idea of the level. This is the minimum level. This is the maximum level. Yes, I actually did move it up, not very much. That is maybe a, a quarter of an inch difference. Um, that is there for safety. That is there to remind you not to fill it up to here, thinking that, well, the turkey is this tall, I gotta have this much oil in it. Uh, that is not necessarily accurate for your needs. And so we're gonna figure out how much we need with water first. Let me show you how that works. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, uh, the hook claw that came with our, our cooker and we're going to put it up through the bottom of our turkey. Kind of make sure that the legs are not in the way. So it can grab it good and the top end is going to come right out of the neck hole here. Oops, it's a little slippery. Okay, this is our handle and this is how you're going to be able to raise and lower the turkey into the cooker. We're going to start by lowering the turkey into our cooker while it is completely empty. Okay. Step number one, I'm gonna use water and I'm going to fill up this pot until it is just above the turkey. 
I don't want any more oil than necessary, but I want to see that it's covered. Then when we take the turkey out, what's going to happen is the water level will drop down and we're going to mark that spot so we know how much oil to put in. Super simple. Let me add some water to this and we'll be right back. Okay, we filled the pot just above the turkey with water. The line comes to about right here now and uh, I don't need to know how full it's going to be after the turkey's in it though. I need to know how much to put in before the turkey goes in. That way we can preheat the oil and uh, get it to the right temperature before we start cooking. So the next thing I need to do is hook that holder with my, uh, my little coat hanger here. And I'm going to pull the turkey back out for now. I, I cleaned my pan up. I'm going to let it sit here for a little bit and see where the water level drops down to. Now, it's important to give it a minute for the water that's kind of sitting inside of it now to all drip out. Um, there wouldn't be very much of a difference, but we, we don't want to move enough water with the turkey into this pan that we end up not putting enough oil in there. So I'm going to give it a second here uh, for everything to drip out. And we get our bird out of the way. All right, now that it's out, we can see the official amount that we're going to need to fill with oil. So I'm looking at my, my gauge that's on the side of the pan, and it is almost exactly at the maximum fill line. It is below it just a tiny bit. That happens to be a good marker for me this time. That's not always the case. If the bird is different sizes, it takes, you know, the displacement would be different. The amount of oil that needs to go in there is different. It always should be pretty close, but here's another tip. If your water line is not where there's an easy mark on the container, take a piece of tape. Um, I've used electrical tape before. Duct tape would work. I probably wouldn't use painter's tape. Uh, masking tape just because I don't think it would stay stuck on there. So it has to stick well enough for us to empty and rinse this out and get it ready to go and then start adding the oil. Then we take it out before we start cooking. But I will reach down and actually tape it on the inside of the pot right above the water line so that you know exactly where to fill to. So, okay, we're so close now. We know how much we need. I'm going to add the oil. I've got one um, one thing of brand new oil, and I have a couple of these that are recycled from a previous use I'm going to add in here. So I didn't buy all new oil for this turkey, and um, we'll get it up to this level, and we'll go outside and we'll get the fire going. Okay, here we are outside. I had to get the little uh, windsock for the microphone because there's a pretty good breeze today. This is the cooker. Um, it's very simple. It's just a gas line that comes into a burner. The platform that is in there is, is down low. The, uh, the pot sits down inside, so you've got these ribs to kind of help stabilize it. As you can see, it's rocking a little bit. I need to settle this base on this ground a little better. I, it's, it's soft dirt. I kind of kicked out a couple of little holes to make it level. Um, but in doing so, after I add some weight, it is not quite where it needs to be. Uh, we definitely want this to be sturdy, so I'll move it around a little bit. That is how the pot is going to sit. The propane tank, the line that connects the propane tank on mine, they don't all have this, has a electronic safety built in. Um, what's going to happen is we're going to open up the valve on the propane tank like we normally would, open it all the way up. Then the regulator has its own valve. There's an off and on direction turning it on, so we're going to twist it this way. We're also going to open this one all the way up for now. Later we will turn this down to regulate the temperature a little bit. Then we have this electronic sensor. A quick press of the button will show, there we go, whether there is gas flow or not. 
and we'll show if the battery is good. Now I just replaced the battery the other day, so it's fine. Pressing this down allows the gas to go through. Now there is a thermostat that has to heat up that will leave the line open. So if I hold this down and light it and let go, it's gonna go out instantly. We're gonna have to hold this down and let it warm up for a little bit. Safety feature, I believe it has a tip over sensor. So if it falls over, it'll stop uh, burning. And, uh, and those are handy, those are good, but you gotta understand how it works. Okay, so we're ready to get this thing lit. Um, the propane tank is open up. The fuel line on the regulator is opened up. There's no gas flowing because I'm not holding this, uh, the safety button down. I have a little uh, butane lighter. It's a little bigger than a, than a Bic. Um, the, the long lighters with the trigger uh, would be a good option for this. It's not good to have something short and have your hand right in the middle of this. For me, this one is long enough and works fine. We're gonna get the gas going. And I'm gonna quickly light it over here. Now again, we gotta let the thermostat warm up. If I let go now, the whole thing just goes off. Okay, so we gotta hold on to it long enough for that safety to kick in. And then it'll stay on. The instructions say 30 seconds. Um, it's usually around that. Sometimes I count 30 and it goes out. It wasn't quite there to start all over. I'm not counting right now, but I'm gonna say that's been about 10 seconds. Okay, now we have ignition. First thing that I'm gonna do is just get my pot settled on here. I'm gonna let it warm that up and actually boil off the water. When I filled it up with water to check it and I rinsed it out, I want it dry. All right, it has stopped boiling off that leftover water. And so now, we'll start adding our oil, paying attention to our max fill line. Now it is splattering a little bit while I'm pouring in. Um, but the oil is not hot yet, so it's not burning me. It's not causing any problems. I am trying to be careful and not splatter more than necessary, but that is just part of adding large quantities of oil. Okay, the good news is that took a little less than I thought. Just under three gallons of oil today. So that's good. We're gonna put the lid on with our thermometer hanging down in the oil through that hole. And we're just going to give it time to heat up. Okay, right off the bat, the oil is checking in at about 125 degrees. Now, the Butterball website, and this, the turkey that I got is not Butterball, but it's a, you know, a name in turkeys. Um, the Butterball website cooking instructions say, 375 in a deep fryer, and that is what they're designed to run around. If you look on the, uh, the thermometer that comes with it, your, your hot zone is 350 to 375. Basically anything above that is red, too hot, dangerous, bad things might happen. Uh, what I have found is cooking turkeys at 375 seems to be a little much. We're gonna dial it back between 325 and 350. That's not a big difference, but that's just enough. We're going to uh, watch it real close because they cook fast, not five minutes fast, but 30 minutes is pretty fast compared to a few hours in the oven. And uh, make sure we're checking the temperatures along the way. There's two different things we're looking for. The, uh, the white breast meat on a turkey needs to hit an internal temperature of 165 degrees. The dark meat, so the legs in that area, that's gonna be the easiest thing to check. It needs to be a little more, um, needs to be 175 degrees. And so as we check this, and sometimes it's tricky, I'm not going to uh, try to, to poke my digital thermometer down in the bubbling, boiling oil. What I'm gonna do is bring my pan out. I've got my, my work table out here with me. Some kind of table is helpful. Um, to be working alongside your 
deep fryer, whether it's a, a plastic folding table, a card table, a picnic table, even if you can do it next to a, a grill that has a good sturdy shelf that comes off the side, um, that'll help. I just brought my DeWalt workbench out today because it's sturdy, it's easy to, to move around, set up. I can adjust the legs and make sure it's pretty level. And uh, I'm gonna bring that uh, baking dish that we had the turkey in the refrigerator, uh, clean it out, bring it out here, and when we stop to check the temperature here in a little bit, I'm gonna take the turkey all the way out, set it in the dish, and then take my time getting a temperature reading in a few places. Um, that gets it out of the oil, it keeps me from, from stabbing through and touching the side of the, the pan or the, the oil itself. I make sure I get the, the thermometer where I need it and then uh, we'll make sure that it's cooked all the way through without overdoing it. So once the oil reaches 350 is where I want it to start with. Um, we're almost ready to put the turkey in. We got one thing left to help keep it from fizzing and popping and splattering and, uh, and boiling out and popping on me and maybe burning and that is to get rid of as much moisture on that turkey as we can. So while the oil is heating up let's go back inside make sure our turkey is ready to go. All right the last thing before we can lower our turkey into the oil is we want to get rid of the excess moisture that's on the outside. Okay we had it wrapped up in the refrigerator we had the marinade injected in it as long as the marinade is inside the meat it's doing its job if it's just hanging on the outside or condensation collecting or water because I put it in the, the pot to figure out uh, how much oil I needed to add. We want to get the moisture off of the outside of the bird rather than burning a, a half a roll of paper towels. Um, we've got a nice clean towel here and I'm just going to take and set our bird onto the towel and we're just going to pat it dry. Um, this is going to help keep those initial splatters when it first comes into contact with that hot grease. I'm going to keep it from, from blowing up bigger than it has to. Um, there's always going to be some popping and crackling and, and splattering if you fried anything in oil. Uh, even right on the kitchen stove you know that that's just part of it. But this is a big bird that is a big pot of hot oil. We want to keep that to a minimum as much as we can. Dry his armpits. Okay, so just a, a little bit extra there to reduce the risk of getting burned um, or of having some sort of an accident. Okay, that looks pretty good. This towel will go straight to the laundry. I'm going to let it sit right here for just a couple of minutes while that oil finishes heating. I'm going to clean this and get it ready to go because I want this sitting outside. Um, when I pull it out to check the temperature, we're going to set it in this uh, on my workbench. And so I'm going to clean this again and get it ready. And then as soon as the oil is ready, we're going to carry this out, drop it straight in. Let me get the camera moved and we will be back in just a second. Okay, we passed the 325 mark. Not quite to 250 yet, but we're gonna get this turkey. Another thing that I, I brought with me, but I didn't mention earlier, the lid to this gets hot. You will have to have some sort of a pot grabber. Um, I'm not gonna take the time to move this lid over and set it down, because once I get the handle off of this, I want the lid back on. It's gonna be bubbling and popping, and, uh, and we're gonna do that first thing.
All right, it is time for our first temperature check. I would like to say that um, 20 minutes has gone by, but it's been more than that because the wind has blown out my flame either three or four times now. A um, couple of times I was inside trying to get other things done and I would poke my head out to check and realize that it had stopped. So uh, that is slowing it down. It's been about 30 minutes, but it wasn't actively cooking the whole time. I think this is a good time to pull it out and see where we're at though. So again, this lid is gonna be hot. It can be a little tricky. Um, snagging that uh, that metal hook um, so you you might want to have a spatula or a pair of tongs or something to reach in there and help grab a hold of it look at how beautiful golden brown that skin is turning i don't know if the internal temperature is there yet but it looks good on the outside i'm going to lay this in the pan behind me breast side up And we're going to check the temperature. Now I don't want the thermometer to be resting on bone. So I'm coming in kind of low and sticking it. I want to make sure I'm well under the surface of the skin. Um, I'm not skimming the top, but I'm not going straight down in. I don't want the probe to be in this empty cavity or up against a bone. So we're going to go up through there. Okay, that says 168. For the breast, that is perfect. Now when I go to the other side, it only says 140. That's why I take it out to do this. Um, I take my time, I can check it in a few places and make sure I'm getting an accurate reading. 148 there. I'll come back to the other side. We'll go a little higher up. I've got... Okay, 154, 156. I'm gonna go into the leg now. Okay, and I think I hit bone there because it was showing really high. Okay, yeah, one of those readings went all the way up to like 190. Um, you sure that's not accurate? The others were around 160 for the legs. Now they do need to cook some more. This side is showing 170. So that's why you see we get some, some different results. Um, if I come in from the top closer to the neck, 162. Okay, so it is not quite done, but it's not gonna take a whole lot longer. I'm gonna start checking it now every five or six minutes um, to make sure I don't overcook it. It is not going to be as um, volatile dropping it back in now that it is pretty well cooked. Um, it's just be a lot easier to set in there and get my hook out. Get this lid back on. So it's really close. It looks good on the outside. A little bit longer to bring that internal temperature up. Make sure we're checking in several places that we get a nice fair assessment of the temperature of the inside of that turkey. Make sure it's cooked all the way through. Just a few more minutes and we're gonna be good to go. Okay, I set a six minute timer. Um, we're gonna pull the turkey out, check the temperature again. Um, it's, the burner just went just now, which is fine. I'm not going to relight it unless I need to put it back in. Uh, but that just goes to show <laughs> it just keeps going out on me. Um, so you got to pay attention. I'm pretty sure it's just the wind. I don't think there's anything faulty in my burner. Uh, because I used this just the other day, I didn't have this problem. So we're going to pull it out. We're going to check the temperature one more time and see if we're there yet.
Mmm. Boy, the outside of that bird just looks beautiful. Okay, we are calling this done. Uh, I know you can't see, you're wondering why I'm sticking it in so many places. Um, I'm getting 165 to 175 like I should. Um, the places where I'm not getting that, I'll stick it in one of the thinner areas and it'll jump all the way up to 195. And I think that's because it's holding some of that hot oil. Um, I sat here long enough checking, I'd go back to those spots and it's already back down because either the, the oil is, is running down inside um, to a different location or because sitting out in the air is just cooling off that much. Uh, we've got the internal temperature that we want. When I go inside, I'm not gonna do a full carve. Um, well, I've got another video, I'll put a link to that at the end for you to check that out. But I am gonna cut into this and let you see why we deep fry our turkey. Um, this is going to be beautiful and delicious. I'll meet you back inside. Okay, the moment we're all waiting for, um, we're going to see how this turned out. Hopefully, it actually did <laughs> cook all the way through, and I don't look silly right here on our... Oh, look at that pulling apart. It's almost like it's been on the smoker for hours, but it's just been in the, uh, the deep fryer for... Um, a little longer than it than it should have taken on this one, only because the wind kept blowing my flame out. Um, so I cooked it 20 minutes, and then when I realized that it hadn't been cooking the whole time, I set it for 12 more. Um, and that's when you saw me check the temperature. I did six more, so 20, 30 to 38 minutes. All I can really say is it took less than 38 minutes, um, which again is really fast compared to the oven. Let's cut into this breast. Um, this is not a full official carving video. There's a link to that in the description below and we'll put a, put a card at the end of the video if you wanna see how to do that. For now, we are just looking for some dinner. Nothing fancy. All right, let me, let me just get a, a wedge of this out. Ah, the skin looks so good. Of all the reasons I mentioned not to deep fry, what you're seeing right now is the biggest reason for deep fry. It is moist. There is a good crispy outside. And if I were doing this a little better, trying to get a A slice here. All right, can you see that? Take a look at that. You can see the the seasoning that we injected in there. So it got a good good spread. Um, this is quite warm because it just came out of the fryer. We've got that good crispy skin on the outside. That is why we deep fry. All right, this is going to be a great dinner for us tonight. Um, the only thing I have left to do is again, um, wanting to hold on and reuse that oil um, another time or two if possible. And so I'm gonna let that pot cool down uh, before I start this. What I'll do is I'll bring the whole pot in the house I'll set it over here right next to the sink. I bought this, this cheap plastic measuring cup from Walmart. Um, it's got a handle on the side, but it doesn't connect at the bottom. And the reason I like that is I'll use it to dip oil off the top, not dredging the bottom where the, the crumbles and bits and things fell down. I'll scoop oil off the top. I'll take the original oil jug that it came in, get a filter, cut off a little bit of cheesecloth. 
I'll drop the cheesecloth in the filter, set the filter in the jug, set the whole jug down in the sink. My big pot will be sitting next to the sink and I'll take and I'll just scoop a cup out, pour it in, let it sift through that filter and we'll get oil that's clean enough, that's good enough, especially with the, the cheesecloth um, strained that we can save and use again later. The reason I like the handle is after I pour it in, there's going to be oil all over the outside because I dipped it down in. I can hang it over the edge of the pot. So this is sitting on the inside, dripping back into the pot, and it keeps the handle clean. So I grab, scoop, pour. I'll go off and do something else. I'll come back, grab, scoop, pour. If you have a couple of funnels, you can have a couple of these jugs uh, going at the same time, and we will reclaim probably 75 to 80 percent of the oil uh, that we use today. Again, one of the downsides is using a lot of oil gets expensive. Um, filtering that out and hanging on to it for other projects, especially like this um, in the big deep fryer, that just makes it go a lot longer and, uh, and helps out a lot. The one other negative I will toss in about uh, using the deep fryer to cook your turkey so we didn't have the drippings I mentioned earlier in the, the oven pan to use to make gravy. Um, once you're done, the bones are not any good for keeping and making stock. Once you deep fry it, you're cooking at a much higher temperature. They're, they're soaking in the oil. They get very dry, very brittle, and they lose the value that they would contribute to the stock anyway. And so that's one more downside. Now we did keep the neck and the giblets and we've got some other things um, that we're working on in the next week or two. We will have enough stuff to make some turkey stock, but it's not gonna come from the bones of this turkey. So again, depending on your usage, maybe deep frying a turkey is right for you, maybe not, but I hope this video helped explain the process and help you choose if it's something you wanna try or not. Now, as for us, we're going to carve some more of this dude up we're going to have some dinner. Thank you for joining. Be sure to hit that like button if you learned something. If you're not a subscriber, it would help us out a lot if you would hit that subscribe button and uh, find out about new videos that we put up, more kitchen projects, more outside projects, and we will see you next time.